In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the safety features between a 2008 Mini Cooper and a 1966 Mini Cooper. Alright, so we'll start off by having a look at the features on the 2008 Mini Cooper. One of the most important safety features in a car are its seat belts. So the seat belt's designed to keep the occupant strapped into the seat in the event of a collision. That way the body of the person isn't going to be flying around the cabin of the vehicle or even worse, going out the windscreen if you need to brake suddenly. So this Mini Cooper has seat belts in the front. But what about the passengers in the back? So any passengers that come along for a ride are going to be protected by the seat belts too. In the back, we've got retractable seat belts as well. All right, so the next thing I'm going to talk about are the headrests. So this 2008 Mini Cooper does have headrests for the driver and front passenger. This headrest can be adjustable. So you can adjust the height of the headrest based on the height of the driver or passenger. Purpose of the headrest is to prevent whiplash. So if I was sitting at a red traffic light and the car behind me didn't notice that I was stopped, if they went into the back of me, it's going to push the car, my car forward. It's going to make my head move backwards. And if my head moves backwards like that, it's not going to move too far because it's protected by the headrest and that'll prevent neck injuries um, and also whiplash. So what about the passengers in the rear? Let's take a look. So both of the rear seats have a headrest that slides up. This can be adjusted to suit the height of the person that's sitting in the seat. So again, you need to make sure the headrest is aligned with the height of the person sitting there just to protect their head if someone hits into the rear of the vehicle. Just one other feature about the seats as well. Um, one thing about driving is that you want to be comfortable. Now, every person is a different height. Um, we all have different body size, um, different length legs and arms. So you want to be able to make sure the seat is adjustable. So in this case here, the actual seat itself can um, adjust back and forward depending on the length of your legs. It also has the option of um, adjusting the base of the seat. I can make it higher or lower but also the actual back of the seat. So the back of the seat can be adjusted and the angle that it tilts back can be suited for the person sitting in the vehicle. The next safety feature we're going to talk about are airbags. So originally when airbags first came out, you gener generally only find them on the steering wheel of a car because that was the main place where you need it. So if there's a collision, the airbag will inflate and it just gives the driver that little added bit of protection so they don't hit the steering wheel or any parts of the front of the car. So they, airbags work well as long as you're using it in conjunction with a seatbelt. So let's take a look at all the airbags in this car. So as mentioned, there's an airbag in the steering wheel. There's also an airbag under the dash here for the front passenger. There are also what we call side curtain airbags. So there's one on this A pillar up here. So everywhere there's an airbag, there's a logo that says airbag. There's one on the B pillar or the center pillar. And then there's also another one on the rear pillar, the C pillar in the back. Another added feature is that there are also airbags on the seats as well. So within the seat itself, that will inflate to protect the driver from the side. Okay, next we're going to talk about brakes. Um, another important safety feature that this 2008 Mini Cooper has, it has ABS brakes. So ABS stands for Anti-Locking Braking System. So in the event of an emergency, if I slam my foot on the brake, on an older vehicle, the wheels may themselves lock up. If the wheels lock up, you're not going to get as much um, friction on the brake pads to slow the vehicle down because the wheels aren't rotating. They're just skidding along the road. So the advantage of an ABS system is, if I slam my foot on the brake, what it does, it monitors the amount of um, speed that the wheels are rotating at, and it makes sure, makes sure that each wheel is still rotating, but also applying pressure to the brakes. So let's have a look at the ABS module. 
All right, so in the engine bay, if you take a look down here, this little section here, you'll see a lot of um, pipes um, connected to that um, module there. This controls the anti-lock braking system. So it can regulate the amount of pressure in each of the brake lines for on each of the wheels. So if the wheel locks up and stops spinning, it's gonna reduce the brake pressure on that particular wheel. So it will still rotate, but still have enough um, pressure in that brake line to make the wheel um, come make the wheel still stop but not lock up. Another safety feature that actually works um, in tandem with the um, ABS system is electronic stability control. So what might happen is you might reach a point where the rear of the car starts sliding out, drifting if you go too fast around a corner. Uh, what the system can do is maybe apply a little bit of brake pressure to either the left or right rear wheel in order to keep the car going in a straight line. Now the electronic stability control or ESC that's usually turned on and off. You have a button which um, can be con turned off by the driver in the event that you actually want to um, perform if you're driving rally um, events or something like that you can turn that feature on or off. Most of the time you just leave it on. So in this um, 2008 Mini Cooper, uh, they call it ASC, so Active Stability Control, but it's generally the same thing in most cars. So you can turn it on or off, but by default it's always left on to provide the driver with some protection and control. Okay, so looking at the design of the front of the car, one feature or one factor that manufacturers keep in mind is the front crumple zone. So the purpose of the crumple zone allows the front of the car, if it does um, hit a, another car or another object on the road, the front of the car will crumple up to absorb the shock of that impact rather than all of the force being put on the driver in the cabin. So a vehicle like a van or a bus, there's not much of a crumple zone. Um, but on a car, you'll generally have all the region from the front of the car to the front of where the main cabin begins. So in this 2008 Mini Cooper, that crumple zone is approximately one metre. So at the rear of the vehicle, you guessed it, you had a rear crumple zone. So the rear crumple zone will allow for the body to be crumpled up a bit to protect the occupants inside in the event of a collision from the rear. So if in this particular case here, there isn't much of a crumple zone compared to a vehicle like an SUV um, a ute or a station wagon. So in this case here from the back of the vehicle to where the occupants are sitting it's only about 40 centimetres. Uh, that distance would be much larger in something like an SUV or a station wagon or a sedan. So it does have a rear crumple zone but it is only small. There may be times when there's an impact from the side of the vehicle. So for example, if I was to run a red light and then a car is coming in the opposite direction, it might hit the side of my car. So one thing that manufacturers do to protect that is install side impact bars. So I can't exactly show you this here, but if you, ha um, I'll bring up an image so you can have a look. But within inside the door cavity itself, there is an, a bar of metal reinforcement inside the door and also this um, uh, side panel on the rear that prevents or reduces the amount of crumpling to the actual shell of the vehicle when a vehicle um, hits directly side onto the vehicle okay let's talk about windscreen so the purpose of the windscreen is to protect the driver from um, wind rushing in at them also rain if it starts to rain and dust and debris that might be flying around so windscreens have been manufactured now they are what we call laminated. So this car is fitted with a laminated windscreen. What that means is it's made up of multiple layers of glass and also a layer of plastic, which prevents the windscreen from shattering into thousands and thousands of little tiny pieces if the glass gets shattered or damaged. So instead of um, breaking into pieces, the windscreen will still stay in place, cracks will appear, um, but the plastic layer within the glass layers prevents it all from shattering and um, breaking into tiny pieces those tiny pieces could um, hit the driver and front passenger and cause them a lot of injury. When you're driving, you want to have a good view of what's happening around you. Not just in front of you, but also to the sides and also behind you. That's why cars are fitted with mirrors. So first of all, we have a rear vision mirror 
that allows the driver to see everything behind them but also keep monitoring what's happening on the road in front it's this 2008 mini coupe is also fitted with side mirrors so i can monitor what's happening in that left lane and also what's happening in the right lane another feature that this 2008 mini cooper has are sun visors so if the driver is driving and the sun is getting close, closer to the horizon or it could be in the morning when the sun is rising so the sun isn't too high in the sky and it's interfering with the driver's vision these sun visors will allow it to block out the sunlight and give the driver a better view of the road this 2008 Mini Cooper also has a side, separate side visor as well so that's pretty useful all right, one other thing I wanted to point out, it's not necessarily a safety feature, but it is a useful thing. Um, when cars are manufactured, they do include a what we call a cigarette lighter socket. These are mainly just used for power now. Not many people smoke or need to use that as a lighter. So it does include a what you would call a cigarette lighter, but I don't use it in this car because I will have um, things plugged in there. That's a socket to power the camera and also the GPS. Okay, so what this car does come with, um, these are cup holders, but this little um, ashtray, that slots into there. Um, and here's the little um, cigarette lighter that would normally be here. So, because I'm a, I don't smoke, I'm a non-smoker, I've got no use for this, using that as a lighter. And also the ashtray, that's no use either, because it just takes up space, um, and I just use that as a cup holder instead. So, I've still saved these, because they're part of the original car but they're not used and I never keep that in the car. So it only has one ashtray. Okay, so the final thing I wanna talk about are windscreen wipers. This car, of course, does have front windscreen wipers. The reason for those is to clear the windscreen if it's raining to allow the driver to have good visibility of the road. Um, let's take a look at the rear of the vehicle. And because this is a hatchback, most hatchbacks have a rear windscreen wiper as well. That allows you to see out the rear window if you're reversing and when it's raining. Alright, so that's hopefully giving you a good look at the safety features that come in a 2008 Mini Cooper. But what about one that was made around 40 years earlier than this one? So let's take a look at the Morris Cooper and examine some of those similar features that we looked at in this 2008 Mini Cooper. So this Mini Cooper was originally built in 1966 but it's um, since been restored. So it's been restored to as near as possible to the original condition. But let's have a look at some of the same safety features on this Mini. Okay, so let's first talk about seatbelts. So when this car was originally built, it did have seatbelts fitted uh, when it was new. Um, so the seatbelts that have been fitted to this vehicle since it's been restored, these are modern day um, seat belts. These are a lot more um, secure than what the original seat belts would have been like. And the advantage of these is that they're also retractable, so you don't have the seat belts just flopping around the floor. And they are much safer than what the original seat belts would have been. So the front driver and passenger both have these seat belts. But what about the rear? Let's take a look. So in the rear of this 1966 Mini Cooper, you'll notice that there are no seat belts fitted. So originally when it was new, there were no seat belts fitted to the rear. There were only seat belts fitted to the front for the front driver and passenger. And it wasn't even an option to get them installed. Um, if you did want seat belts in the rear, you needed to just go somewhere to a mechanic and have them installed. All right, if you take a look at the seats in this uh, 1966 um, Mini Cooper, you'll notice that there are in fact no headrests on those seats. So if I'm sitting in this car and I haven't, um, sitting at the red lights for example, and a car hits me from the rear, the car will want to move forwards. Um, inertia will want to keep my head in the same place. My head will obviously tip back. I, there's no headrest to protect my neck. So there's a chance that I'll get some serious neck injuries and whiplash because there is no headrest on this vehicle. So in the rear of the vehicle, 
um, it doesn't have any head rests fitted either. So I'm like a five foot nine adult. I'm sitting in the back seat here, and again, there is no protection at all for your head or headrest. So again, if someone slams into the back of the car while I'm sitting at a red light, I'm going to get some serious neck injuries. On this Mini, the, there are very limited things that can be adjusted with the seat. The actual height of the seat is pretty much in a fixed position. You can adjust the um, distance the seat is from the front of the vehicle. There is a little knob underneath here, but there's only like a few positions, like one, two or three. Um, the other feature is to the rear of the seat um, does not have any adjustment to adjust the angle that the back of the seat is at. Um, and also, you'll notice that it, it is hinged, so it's not actually fixed to the floor and it doesn't lock down to the floor either. Alright, so in this 1966 Mini Cooper, there are no airbags whatsoever. So, in the event of an accident, I'm relying on the seat belts and the structure of the car to protect me. Um, there's going to be no protection here to prevent myself from banging the steering wheel or any of the interior in the event of an accident. So no airbag on the steering wheel, no airbags for the passenger, and there's definitely no curtain airbags either to protect any from, protect from side impacts. All right, so let's talk about braking. So this Mini does not have any computer controls, no um, electronics in it to control things like ABS or electronic stability control. So there's no ABS. Um, so what will happen is in the event where I slam my foot on the brake, it will make the wheels lock up. Those wheels will lock up, the car will keep skidding along the road, and there's less um, friction between the wheel and the brake pad, so the car won't stop as quickly compared to a vehicle with ABS fitted. The other um, factor to electronic stability control, so there's no monitoring or no computer monitoring the rotation of the wheels um, in relation to how the car is moving. So there's no electronic stability control either. The next thing we want to talk about are crumple zones. So the purpose of a crumple zone allows the vehicle to crumple up in the front region to take and absorb up some of the energy from the accident uh, rather than all of that energy being pushed into the cabin and injuring the driver. So in the case of this classic Mini, the crumple zone is 75 centimetres. Okay, so let's take a look at the rear crumpled zone. So in this case here, the distance from the back of the car to where the occupants are sitting, which is about there, um, there is about 50 centimetres. So 50 centimetres is actually a little bit more crumpled zone in the rear of this compared to the 2008 um, Mini Cooper. So the crumple zone, there's a lot more boot space in here. Um, the panels in the rear lid are pretty thick as well. So there's a bit more protection in this vehicle to protect the occupants that are sitting in the rear seat. Okay, so let's have a look at the um, doors of this Mini. So this particular model of the Mini doesn't have um, side impact protection bars. So inside the door, it's pretty much just one sheet of metal on the outside and then there's a sheet behind this um, trim here. So there are no solid metal bars running inside the door to prevent any injury to the driver if the car is here and then someone hits the car from the side. It's the same as the rear panel here. That's pretty much just one thin layer of metal. And on the other side, there's um, some padding and trim on there. So again, um, if, it, if there's an, a vehicle that hits the side of this Mini, the occupant or, and passengers in the rear are gonna get um, impacted from the accident. All right, so let's talk about the windscreen. In this case here, this Mini is not actually fitted with a laminated windscreen. It's a standard windscreen. So in the event of an impact or something hitting that windscreen, it is gonna smash and shatter into thousands of little tiny pieces. You can, um, in fact, buy brand new windscreens for these which are laminated, and that's probably one of the next safety things I should do to modify this Mini. Okay, let's talk about mirrors. So as standard, this Mini did come fitted with a rear vision mirror. So that's a standard feature, but um, when this was brand new, it did not actually have side mirrors 
installed on it. So that's something I've just added when I've restored this Mini, just to make it a little bit safer. But originally, it would not have come standard with side mirrors, only the rear vision mirror. The next thing to talk about are sun visors. So as explained in the video on the 2008 Mini, um, the advantages of sun visors are to block out the sunlight if it's early morning or late in the evening towards sunset. So that allows the driver to have better visibility and also the front passenger too, um, just by blocking out that sunlight if it's coming in through the top of the windscreen. All right, one of the, um, another feature, it's not a safety feature, but it's just something I wanted to point out. Um, when this car was built in the 60s, um, a lot of people did smoke. So you'll notice that there are a few ashtrays. So we have one right here for the driver and front passenger to use. So that's one ashtray up there. Also in the rear of the car, there are also more ashtrays. So you've got one here for the passenger sitting on the left of the car and also one there for the passenger sitting on the right side of the car. So in total, there are three ashtrays. So it's interesting that they put ashtrays in the back of the car as a priority rather than seat belts. All right, so the final thing to talk about are wipers. This car is fitted with windscreen wipers to the front windscreen. That's a standard feature. They all came with that. Uh, that allows the windscreen to be nice and clear if it starts raining. Um, because of the actual angle of the rear window, and a lot of sedans don't necessarily have a rear windscreen wiper, um, so this one doesn't have one fitted at the rear. Uh, because of the angle of the glass, I guess the water runs off it a lot quicker and it doesn't stay there. So hopefully you've enjoyed watching this video and the comparison between the safety features of this 1966 Mini Cooper compared to the 2008 Mini Cooper. Um, I hope you've been able to um, see how some of these features have changed over time in the purpose of protecting the um, drivers and the passengers in vehicles. So one thing um, that I usually do when I'm driving this older vehicle is compensate for the lack of safety features. So doing things like if it's wet weather, leaving a larger stopping distance, and even normal driving conditions, leave a larger stopping distance compared to what you normally would. Um, you need to be more alert about what is going on around you and just try and be aware of what the other drivers are doing around you because of those limited safety features. You need to think more clearly about what's going on around you to protect you and your passengers in this vehicle. Okay, thanks for watching.